welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm actually going to share a project with the new Cricut Cake. I've actually had my Cricut Cake for a couple months and I've really had a lot of fun with it. Doing the typical cakes and cookies and cupcakes and things like that. But today we're going to do something a little different. We're actually going to cut pie crust. So let's get started. Step one, I actually chose a pie crust that you can buy at the grocery store already made and rolled up. I allowed it to sit out until it is at room temperature. And get my mat ready. The mats that you use with the Cricut Cake are a little different than what we're used to with the Cricut Expression. These mats are, look the same as far as size and feel, but they are a different color and they have the round grid on them instead of just the grid, the square grid. And that's so that we can do things like today's project and measure out what we're doing actually on the mat. Now the mats do not come sticky, so we actually make them sticky with a little bit of shortening and a pastry brush. not to put too much on there. You don't want it to be white because then your pie crust will move around. But you want a good amount on there so that it actually sticks. If you don't put enough of the shortening on, then the pie crust will move around again. So it's kind of a fine science, but you just want to make sure it's a good, slick, shiny surface, okay? So I'm going to simply just place my pie crust down and roll it out onto the mat. I'm going to take my rolling pin and I'm just going to move my rolling pin over the pie crust to make it thinner. In order for the Cricut Cake blade to actually cut into my pie crust, we need for it to be a, as thin as we can possibly make it without compromising the actual crust itself. So I'm going to move it all the way across, putting some pressure. as I want it. I'm going to take a pizza cutter and I'm just going to go and make sure I trim where the edges of my mat are because I don't want the rollers of the machine to have to roll over the, the pie crust and get all messy gooey. Now the pie crust is really soft because I did this at room temperature. It's real soft and kind of gooey or whatever and I want it to be a little bit more firm. So I'm going to take my pie crust on the mat and stick it in my freezer, okay? And then I'll be right back. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. The pie crust is in the freezer, and I think it's ready now. So we'll take it out. Just froze it on the mat. And we'll get ready to cut. potatoes and then some canned corn and peas. Mix it all up, add some cream potato soup, uh, garlic, salt and pepper and you're good to go. It fills and it freezes wonderfully. So this is the mixture with the pies. And then I always put the top on top of it just like your pot pies should be and I just use the pie crust to do that. But we're going to decorate this one up because this one's for a family friend who just had surgery. So. Hang on a minute, I'll be right back because my pie crust has been cut, but it's in the freezer waiting for me to get ready to put it on my pie. So I'll be right back. Alright, 
Here is my mat with my pie crust on it. It has been frozen again, and then I cut my Band-Aid out for the top of the pie. Band-Aid on a pie, that's for someone who's having surgery, remember. And um, the Band-Aid actually comes from B as a Boy, it's Cricut Light cartridge. I cut it at two inches, and then I stuck it back in the freezer to freeze again so that it was stiff for me to take it off the mat. And I'm gonna use my little spatula up underneath it and just bring the whole thing up off the mat. Just like that. There we go. Take my band-aid and put it off my spatula and stick it on my wax paper so that I can actually butter it. So I'm going to stick this back in the freezer in a few minutes so I can cut some more things out for another pie. Then, as you can see here, there's my shapes. I cut the Get Well out at two inches from the Carousel's Cricut Light cartridge and the Band-Aid came from, came from B is for Boy. And I'm going to put it on top of my cake, on top of my pie. Um, I will brush it with butter so that this browns a little darker than the pie and that way the letters will stand out. So I'll be right back. Alright, I just melted a little bit of butter in the microwave. Taking another pastry brush. I am going to brush my letters with the butter. While it's still on the wax because I don't want it to get the butter everywhere on top of the pie crust. Bring my pie over here and using my little spatula I will lift my letters up and brush the backs of them lightly with the butter also. That's what will help make them stick to my pie crust. It's going to take me a few minutes to do this. It's not very long. But I'll be right back and show you my final result. Alright, I've got my saying on top of my pie. And last thing you'll do is just take your fork and make sure that you put little holes in it so that the steam can escape and the pie cooks well. Just like that. So, give me a few minutes, we'll come back and we'll show you our finished product. Whether you're making pies for your dinner, like pot pies or a meat pie, or whether you're making desserts, it's always great when you're doing it to make several at the same time. Then that way you can easily freeze them. These pies, which are nine inch in the ones that you can get in the freezer section of your grocery store, um, fit perfectly in a gallon Ziploc bag that's freezer safe and you just basically stick the top closed, put the information on the top and stick it in the freezer. Then you've got an easy meal ready when you need it or if you need to take a meal to a family in need, it's always there too. Now here's my pie that's going to my friend. She just had surgery and so this is for her and her family. I'll put it in the Ziploc bag with instructions on top on what to put it in the oven and for how long and hope that they enjoy it. So one last tip, if you do this and you don't uh, and you go to use the freezer Ziploc bags, don't get the one with the little zip that slides across the top because it makes the opening a little too short and the 9 inch pies are not going to fit. So little tip for you. Now I want to show you my pie that I finished baking, fresh out of the oven and ready to eat. Didn't it turn out great? Well, my family is really hungry and they're waiting for me to join them at the dinner table. So I just want to say thanks for coming into my kitchen and watching my video today. I hope I was able to share something with you that maybe helps you feed your family.